In this video, we're going to continue looking at tangent functions. We're going to look at the graphs, but now we're going to move more onto the transformations. Now, these transformations affect the equations as well as affect the actual graph. So, beginning with dilations in the y-axis. So, when we're dilating in the y-axis, we have to replace x with x on k. And that means we're now going to get an equation with tan y is equal to tan x on k. So, that means k is inside the trigonometric function. So when k was outside in the previous video we looked at that and that just changed how steep the function was but now as it's inside the trigonometric function just like sine and cos this means it's going to change the period and as well for the tan function it's going to change the asymptotes. So let's say we want to dilate in the y-axis by a factor of a half. So we're dilate by factor of a half. So this means we're replacing x with x on a half. That means we're replacing x with 2x. So this is going to give us the equation now of y is equal to tan 2x. So y is equal to tan 2x. So let's think, well, what happens to the um, period? So the period before was a pi. But now with 2x, that means that whatever x value it is, it's times by 2. So before we wanted to go from 0 to pi, but that was when we just had tan x. But now we have tan 2x, we only need to go from 0 to pi on 2, because pi on 2 times 2x gives us pi. So for these x values, when we times them by all by 2, we can still get the same period of 0 to pi. Therefore, the new period... So when I was, oh, I said before, like, you can still get the period of 0 to pi. What I mean is you can still get the cycle of 0 to pi, as then it repeats itself. So the new period is equal to pi on 2. So what does, the, what are the asymptotes? So we think, what is the first asymptote we can find? So the first asymptote is when cos 2x is equal to 0. And that's because that's when tan 2x is undefined. So cos 2x is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to pi on 4. And the reason for this is that you could say, like, let a equal 2x, then cos a is equal to 0. Therefore, a is equal to pi on 2. Therefore, x is equal to pi on 4. And then we know that because of the unit circle, it's 0 at pi on 2. Then we can plus pi, and it's also 0. Plus pi again, then it's 0. So therefore, we know that the asymptotes are going to be at pi on 4, and then it's going to be the next one at pi on 4 plus pi on 2. And as you think, well, that's pi. It's actually pi on 2 because you're going 2x, and that means you can, to get from pi from this one to the next one, it's pi, but as you're going 2x, you only need pi on 2 because 2 times pi on 2 gives you us pi. So you can think about this as you just go pi on 4, the first one, and then you plus the period, and then k, where k is an integer. So k is in. So that's the general form, so pi on 4 plus pi on 2k, where k is an integer, and then you can go either way, so positive, like 1, 2, 3, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And we'll see that in the graph when we actually graph this function. So what about the x-intercepts? So the x-intercepts are when y is equal to 0. So that means we want to find 0 is equal to tan 2x. Now tan 2x is equal to 0 when sine 2x is equal to 0. So this occurs, the first time this occurs is when x is equal to to uh, 0. However, the next one after that is going to be plus pi on 2 once again, k, where k is an integer. So effectively we're done, when we're dilating by a factor of 2 from the y-axis, we uh, by a half, sorry, we've dilated by a half, so that means we're going to bring it in like closer to the y-axis as it's by a half, and that means everything is going to be sort of like shrunk by 2 as the period is now pi on 2 rather than pi. So graphing this, if we have this as the general tan function, we, and we're graphing tan 
2x, so y is equal to tan 2x. We found out that this here was x is equal to pi on 4, and then the next one was pi on, x is equal to pi on 2 plus pi on 4. So that's going to give us x is equal to 3 pi on 4. Then we'll have x is equal to negative pi on 4. We can also label the x-intercepts at 0, 0. And then pi on 2, 0. And then pi, 0, etc. And then the other way as well would have negative pi on 2, 0. So the even though it's been shrunk, so you can... Um, the steepness hasn't changed. So that means halfway in between these two values, so between pi on 4 and 0, so that means pi on 8, is going to equal 1. So that means there we're going to have pi on 8 is equal to 1. So once again we're going to have 1, we'll have these points there, these points there, we'll have negative 1 down here, here and here. So the shape is still the same, but all we've done, just like sine of cos, is we've shrunk it, and that has caused the x-intercepts to change, as well as the asymptotes. If we had dilated by a factor of, let's say, 3, that means we'd get the new equation of y is equal to tan x on 3. We'll do the similar steps as we did before here. However, with x on 3, so that means we're going to get new values, and instead of being x is equal to pi on 4, it's, and that's half, the period is now going to equal 3 pi. So that means, obviously, these asymptotes are going to become more spread out, so we'd have a lot less. We'd still have these same points, but we'd get something like this. And obviously you need to draw it in more scale. But instead of having asymptotes, let's say pi on 2 plus pi, we'd now have the new asymptote and then plus 3 pi k. So now we're going to look at translations. We're going to look at translations in the y-axis. So this is when you're like moving up or down. So we're replacing here y with y minus k. And remember, for translations, when in the y, it's y, not the opposite. So if we have an equation here, let's say y is equal to tan x, then replace y with y minus k, and we're going to get y is equal to tan x plus k. So what about if we want to uh, translate in the positive y direction by root 3? So that means we'd get the new equation is equal to y is equal to tan x plus root 3. So we've got the standard graph, and now we've translated up 3 units, uh, plus root 3 units. So just like with sine and cos, I think about like the axis sort of a symmetry, and if you're looking at this graph sort of here, we have all the original graph we had down there, the original graph we had previously, there's sort of like an axis of symmetry at the x-axis. And that's because you have this coming up and then there's also coming down. So it's the same thing but negative and coming the other way. And we can see that coming up and that coming down. So when you translate that, just like before, I like to think of that as going up. And that means it's a bit easier when you're graphing it. So if we have the graph here and we're moving it up plus root 3, then that means this axis has also moved up root 3. So I'll just draw this in pencil, and then this would come up. This would be y is equal to root 3. And you can see that from here, you, it looks exactly the same, but however, the x-axis is now down here. So what are the, one of the key differences is firstly the root 3, so realize that and then draw it up there. However, the x-axis have changed, the x-intercepts. So the X, the asymptotes have stayed the same, so they're still the same values. So this would be x is equal to pi on 2 with a period of pi. However, these, x, uh, these intercepts have changed when obviously before we had 0, 0, but now these points are different. So how do we know what these values are? So we look at this and we go, well, we need y is equal to 0. So we let y equal 0. Then we get 0 is equal to tan x plus root 3, therefore tan x is equal to negative root 3, and well, x is equal to negative pi on 3, so tan pi on 3 gives us root 3, and negative pi on 3 is in the fourth quadrant because we want negative, then we can just go plus pi k, where k is integer, 
and that's because of the unit circle because we want the fourth or the second so that's just plus pi either way or plus the period um, yeah plus the period either way for the tan graph and then we want all integers so going back here we can find out that that one there was negative pi on 3 0 then we just have to add plus pi to the next one so it's going to give us 2 pi on 3 0 and then etc and then you can also go the other way so then you minus uh, pi and we get minus 4 pi on 3 0 there However, note that the asymptotes are still the same at x is equal to pi on 2 then you have a period of pi so the next one's going to be x is equal to 3 pi on 2 and then x is equal to negative pi on 2 and drawing the root 3 you can see how the graph is the same when you draw that in it's a lot easier to graph and then also note that halfway in between it's going to be uh, w whatever this axis is plus 1 so it's not going to be y isn't going to equal 1 there it's going to be whatever this axis is or whatever the translation is up and then you also have to add an additional one is going to be there so before you graph it I find that working out what the x-axis intercepts are is a good idea because if they're really close to the asymptote then when you draw it you have to keep that in mind however if they're a bit closer further out then also keep that in mind so draw the axis the line of uh, sort of symmetry draw the x-axis intercepts and then you'll be able to know how to graph it from there.